Hi, I'm Dan Schinder. And I'm Steven Schinder. And we're here on Yes Shift, episode 84, 2022, year in review. I can't believe it, Steve. How is it that New Year's Day is right around the corner, literally? It's like yeah. a nap away. Yeah, this year really flew by. And I mean, honestly, I, I think thanks to like all these episodes and even the surprising interviews we've done, I think this is my favorite post-college year I've experienced. And I think 2023 will be even better for me, even if we get less interviews. I just have a good feeling about the new year. What That's about you? awesome. And you've been out of college for five, six years, 10 yeah. years. Yeah, I, gradu Six, I graduated wait, wait. in 2018. Oh, yeah, I was there. Front row. Yeah. <laughs> no, you were in the front row. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to, yeah this, has been, <laughs> this has been a great year. But uh, I got to tell you, for, for Yes Shift, for Drum Talk TV, and for our marketing company, Advanced Social Marketing, so many big things and milestones that we're about to cross – I'm so excited. Um, big announcements coming on on in all those fronts, folks. And um, I'm I'm like here. I feel energized. This was a great year. You know, bands got to get out and play, and there was less angst online from people not being able to work. And just, nah, I'm so glad we're past that for the most mm -hmm. part, and hopefully continuing to go that way. But I still can't believe that it's um, that the last few days of the year because. Folks, usually Steve and I and the team, we get ready for year-end stuff on Drum Talk TV like three months ahead of time, and it just snuck up. Like I remember thinking for Thanksgiving, like, oh, my gosh, it's like right around the corner. And then all of a sudden, I'm looking behind me going, I was supposed to get this done like way back there. So it's been pretty crazy. And there's Steve's shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just showing off the shirt. Yeah, and um, yeah, I also got like a little – background i'll show for just a little bit uh to commemorate the thing yeah oh so, nice yeah roger dean uh 2022 okay yeah that's a clear view all right that's so cool. I'll put that away nice um, surprise leave it up <laughs> yeah and yeah i guess i could um i'll yeah. be blocking it though that's um, right. but yeah uh, just right away i see a comment from uh, another just yeah, another musician, Adam Parrish. Hey, guys, I've loved all of the Yes Shift content this year. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, uh, Adam. That's very sweet. Yeah, uh, thanks, oh. everyone, for, for following our nonsense. Well, my nonsense and Steve's stuff. Yeah, and Robert <laughs> Nasir just chimed in saying, Happy New Year, gentlemen. Great shows this year. Thanks for all the news, insights, and observations. Thank you. And yours are always welcome, folks. We really yeah. want you to be part of this show. Yeah, yours are no disgrace as far as we're concerned. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we got a good show. We're going to reflect on some of the stuff that happened this year in terms of the music we've talked about and in terms of our show. And I'll also recap the John Anderson Q&A that I saw the other day. And I even have a couple surprises for you, Dad, uh, toward the end. So that'll be really fun. Oh, happy Hanukkah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, I, I guess once again, like we cannot stress how this year, you know, there was some good stuff, but there was also some really heavy stuff, you know, the passing of Alan White as well as Vangelis and oh. other musicians like in the periphery who've been associated with yes members or not. And it's just, you know, it's always tough, especially because we see these people as legends and they mean so much to us, you know, all the music. And in your case, with your associate with Alan, just how kind of a man he was in general. Yeah. Yeah. That was rough. I'll never forget that. Um, yeah. Um, but I'm glad that they've been, you know, paying, you've ever been some really nice tributes to each of these people, you know, whenever each of these people pass away, there's always some nice messages from the people whose lives they've touched and a lot of outpouring. Yeah. And on and, that uh, note, I want to thank Miguel base again for his online name for letting me part, be part of the play for Chris and Alan tribute. Uh, that was really an honor because there were some phenomenal musicians on that. And then there was me 
and yeah. it, was, it was a lot of <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I, I did something a little different that was out of my comfort zone, and that was fun to be a part of. You know, on the topic of tributes and outpouring of love for people we've lost. Yeah, and I see a couple comments from Dave Watkinson, hey, Dave. author of yeah, author of a couple yes related things. Uh, he he actually recently put out an article on yesworld.com about the different covers for the time and a word releases or more than I realized. So people should check that out. Um, cool. But he says, hi from England, a good yes year to be sure. More yesness in 2023. Keep up the fun and variety chaps. And he also adds Alan and Vangelis were huge losses. And yeah, I'm glad. I, I'm very thankful that we were able to have Dave on that Vangelis episode we did yeah. earlier in the year. Yeah, um, absolutely. That was fun. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Um, but, you know, looking back on some of the other news, um, I guess we'll get into these questions that I've concocted. Um, yeah, so the first one is which bits of news surprised us the most? And there were quite, there was quite a variety, you know, in terms of yes, there's a whole shifting from doing relayer to doing close to the edge for the 50th. Right. Um, Asia's tour got delayed uh, to next year and then possibly later into next year. So uh, who knows when that's happening. Uh, there was like some other stuff like the Downs Braid Association album got delayed as well. Yeah. And um, in terms of like yeah, I'm trying to remember like what else there was. Alan, of course, been, so. and Van Gellis, their passings. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, is there anything that comes to mind in terms yeah, of like what was yeah. most surprising to you? And so that people don't think I'm crazy, um, and I hope this is taken the right way, Alan's passing didn't surprise me. It, surpri it still like hit me because I didn't know when, but – you know, without elaborating, it, it just wasn't a surprise, but it's still, I mean, waking up the last day of a vacation and packing up with my wife and then seeing the news flash by or that, it was a shock, but it wasn't a surprise as much as Van yeah, Gellis it was, yeah, it go was ahead. Very, yeah, because it was very steadily, um, you know, all the stuff we'd been hearing, like it wasn't, yeah, I, I get you, but yeah, yeah go Van, on about Van Gellis. Yeah, Van Gellis was a surprise because I wasn't, tapped into his life like I was Alan's and all of that. Um, yeah, I hadn't kept kept track. That was a surprise. Um, the, the whole relayer thing was a surprise. That was, you know, because in the surprise wasn't so much that they moved from relayer to close to the edge. It, the surprise was, no offense, yes. We know some of you are watching. But the surprise was how did, like, did someone say, Hey, you do know this is the 50th of Close to the Edge, right? Should we also do that? Hold on a moment. Maybe we should. Like, that's the surprise to me, how it seems to have been a surprise to them, if that yeah, makes like, sense. How, how it was a bit less. Yeah, like they could have announced it like last year. Or but, planned yeah. out. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah, that was definitely the biggest surprise to me. And I was very... Uh, you know, I expressed my feelings about it, but over time, I came to terms with it. I, I went to the show. Um, my my, fr I'm, my friends uh, enjoyed it as well, and it was, yeah, and Dave just chimed in, the success of the Yes Tour is important. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, yeah, that was definitely the biggest surprise. Um, another surprise, I mean, we talked about recently, was the whole thing of, Jeff Downs helping out Rick Wakeman, like giving him uh, this, I think it was called a psychologic and cause you know, we, there'd been a rift a few years ago. And so to hear about that, it was just a nice little thing that happened, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And. Oh, uh, you know, I think John and Paul Green continuing on as diligently and prolific as they have, was a surprise to me. I didn't realize that that was going to turn into such a almost ongoing permanent thing, if you will, not permanent, but you know, just so I, yeah. that kind of surprised me. Um, and then John doing the zoom things like yeah. you've, and, you've attended and, and I went to one that surprised me too, which I think is great. Yeah. And the announcement of John touring with the band geeks next year, yeah. to do like some yes epics. That was another big one. Yeah. Those are all surprises to me. 
all happy surprises. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the Trevor Horn memoir, again, I still need to like start reading it because, oh, I see Adam Sears chimed in saying, hey, guys, you know, I'm Sears. From hey, Morgan Adam. Scarp. Great to see you here. Yeah, thank you. Um, Thanks for being a part of what we do, too. Yeah, the but like the Trevor Horn memoir was something I didn't know was happening until maybe like a couple months before it came out. And so I'm excited to like dig into it. Um, I, you've probably gotten into it a bit more than I have, but that'll be a fun thing to talk about on the Definitely. show. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and Adam Sears adds, thank you for all the support you have given Lobate Scarp in 2022. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was great having um, Adam on. Uh, I, he might have been like the first or one of the first interviews of this year that I believe so. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny how we listen to things because yes, members guessed it on it. You know, uh, Billy and John Davison were on the album. You have it all. But listening to the whole album as a whole is like it really is a huge thing. And I'm glad it's gotten the I've uh, positive reception and accolades from the Prague community that it has this year. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I guess we can move on to the next thing. Uh, what shows that we saw either in person or streamed online stood out? And this, this, this could be like any music if we want. It doesn't have to be completely yes. Right, okay. But we could mention a few things if we want. So a, a milestone for me is that um, since let me just think. Yeah, since August of 2019, this year was the first live show my wife and I ever went to that I didn't play at. I mean, I did some right. sit in on some stuff. That doesn't count. And and uh, Todd Zuckerman invited us to see Sticks when they came through Phoenix. And it was great to be out. So, folks, don't get me wrong. I... I I, d I don't like being in crowds, but I've bitten the bullet since I was 14 to go to concerts of my favorite bands. Yeah, and it like was doing the NAM show for Drum Talk oh, TV. The NAM show especially. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but being at that concert and seeing people and that whole energy and the vibe even long before they came on, um, because Loverboy played before them and they were phenomenal. They were so good. I couldn't believe it. Um, they played all their hits. They were really good. Just the vibe of that was exciting. And to be at a concert together and then Styx put on a great show. It was, That was the only live show I went to the whole year and the first one since we were in Japan in August of 2019. So that was cool. Um, as far as streamed, you're not supposed to this goes for all of them. The live show was easy because there was only one child because mm -hmm. we went to just one concert. But we saw a bunch of live stuff together or, you know, uh, remotely. And you're not mm -hmm. supposed to pick your favorite children. And I know we know all these people. So that that's tough. But I have to say that the guys, um, especially to do the tribute for St. Jude's, that was Total Mass Retain was just great. Oh, that, was a, that was Awaken, actually. Yeah, and Awaken. Awaken <laughs> and Total Mass Retain's show was also just great with Joe Cass. And, you know, both those bands are just neck and neck as far as how good a job they do, you know. Yeah, I really enjoy how both those bands have been able to carry on. Like, Their wayward the son. Of, yes, oh. <laughs> music. Um, and, yeah, being able to catch those streams and hear – how they interpret the material, you know, they're able to be faithful, but also add in a few surprises and whatnot. Yeah, really, and, really great integrity held to that music. It's it's awesome. Yeah, and there was even that one album earlier this year titled Parallels. Or, yeah, or actually, it was titled Awaken, but it was by Parallels, and that the was a Parallel. surprise with like the interpretations of different material. They That's did. right. Now you saw you saw this show. I didn't see this show. Steve got me the shirt. But what else did you see? Did you see other Yes related shows this year? I don't remember for some weird reason. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, the Yes concert I went to in San Diego is the only concert I've been to this year. Um, oh. Yeah. And uh, 
Oh, we, we also, um, you and I also saw the stream of the gyratory all-stars, which included Aaron Emerson. That's right. Um, yeah, just that having was him. Great too. Yeah, having him and Joe on and then Chris Welch to talk about the Keith Emerson uh, biography, like those were like some nice surprises there. Yeah. But yeah, in terms of performances, um, you know, it was really something being at a live show again. I, it felt kind of alien to me in a way because it had been so long. It had been th over three years by that point because the last you, show I went to was the Royal Affair tour. Right. You know? And you don't like being in crowds or being around people or Steven doesn't even like people. Steven doesn't even yeah. like me. Okay. Well, well, so. it, it depends. Um, like <laughs> when I worked at the NAMM show, there were some different reasons why I wasn't like really feeling it, which I won't go into. Was it me? A long story. No, it okay, wasn't. Okay. Um, <laughs> Was yeah, it Encha? Don't, don't worry. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it's his step but, my wife. Yeah, as long as it's a fun event, yeah, that's a different I'm able vibe to do it. Yeah. yeah, that's you know that's work. It's it's eighteen hours a day. It's on your feet. It's it's rough. It's noisy. It's crowded. It's yeah, I get it. Yeah, um, but the concert you liked, you liked this vibe for the same reason I did, just being around people and the energy of being at a concert. Yeah, it, it was kind of weird to me because everyone was very enthusiastic and I was glad my friends got a lot out of it. Um, I feel like maybe because of my mindset that day, all the stuff I was going through with like the traveling and some difficulties and stuff that maybe I wasn't in the best mindset to fully enjoy the concert, but watching the performances, I could see that what they were doing was very technically um, very good. You know, it's just, and maybe it was also like, um some like something i drank uh, is yeah it's just um it was a good concert i just wasn't something in the you best mindset yeah so from from the venue um oh. it's not, not nothing crazy or anything oh okay um but yeah I, i'm glad i went and when they do a tour again i am gonna see them again uh hopefully they are gonna do relay or what like they're saying now but yeah we'll see yeah that'd um, be awesome and so i guess with that we can move on to favorite new but, releases but, but wait 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 oh okay sorry so I'm are they gonna skip fast. over <laughs> tales i mean if they're doing anniversaries where's oh, tales so in the mix in an interview um steve powell said maybe they could possibly do a bit of the remembering like i don't know if it'll be the whole side or something but he says that john davison really wants to do it so i hope that they do it but i'm not um expecting them to do it just in case like they don't do it and it'll be better if i don't expect it and they do do it you know got it yeah um <laughs> and, and they also like did a couple sides of tales several years ago so you know um and that was a cool yeah, concert that's true yeah. All right. So new releases. Um, so we've mentioned Lobate Scarps, You Have It All. Dave Kersner released A Traveler. And there's that second Arc of Life album, Don't Look Down. Um, off the top of my head, there was also. Um, yeah, there are also like some archival releases like Asia released their Asia and Asia box set, which we're still waiting for. Ours is, yeah, ours is on the way. Yeah. Um, well, so a couple of my favorites. Uh, one is um, um, oh, Don't Look Down. I really liked that. Um, and this. I was we, grabbing it. Which we got. Oh, yeah. The ELP yeah. singles covered vinyl. Yeah. yeah. This is just a wonderfully put together package. And I'm so excited about that. When that Asia package comes, I'm dropping everything, canceling my meetings, <laughs> my teachings, everything I do. I'm canceling that. I'm just going to plow through it. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, and this, which you mentioned. this. Oh, yeah, the Trevor Horn memoir. Yeah, I am loving this. Mm -hmm. And um, while it's not new, something that was new to me was um, – Oops, knocking stuff over. The Bill Bruford um, biography, authorized autobiography. 
that yeah. that wasn't that's not a new release but it was new to me and i thoroughly enjoyed that yeah that um, was a fun read yeah yeah even if you're not a musician that's a life story you know and it's a success story and it's an arc of you know on the life. other side of his yeah <laughs> <laughs> of his peak and in the industry and then leaving and being happy and with what he's done it's just it's a great story it's a great read so what yeah. what are your what's your favorite release single release um so i i think it's probably you have it all from low bait scarp oh you know, they, yeah Duh. yeah they did that such a great, great job too. with the production and the yeah. epics and it's become an instant classic for me um another one that comes to mind you know we got a couple prog collective releases this year and the more recent one seeking peace that was a nice surprise yeah there. that's true yeah yeah so and, but what in terms of one of the things i love about new releases is that uh, i end up having to like brush up i'm like okay what came before and when it came to Dave Kurzer's A Traveler, it was cool going through like the extensive like backlog of like his other couple soul albums and the In Continuum stuff and some other things. So I, I just love how with each of these things, I'm able to dive back and see like all the different releases. Like we really are spoiled in this era. We have ac instant access to so many like decades of releases it's just so great um you, you know what another one is mm -hmm. yeah. uh carrie livgren's album that came out shortly after he passed uh, carrie livgren not carrie livgren that's so funny i was thinking about him the other day because they interviewed phil ehart um i'm having a brain fart uh uh robbie robbie steinhardt, steinhardt. oh carrie's, yeah the one that came out last year yeah carries the original violin player and other key guitar Pfft, wow that was a kansas pretzel but yeah <laughs> <laughs> robbie steinhardt's album that was a uh, surprise to me actually how amazing that was and his rework of dust in the wind and uh, it's just too bad he couldn't see it come out and receive the accolades post-release um that right. was great and then yeah, and um our good friend from Notes from the Edge put out a great album as well. Yeah, that was last year, I think. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, time is just running together. Like yeah, that. <laughs> it is. It's just a big fuzz. Yeah, Cr Creatus Van was pretty cool. Um, we, like this year, we had um, Clive Bailey and Max Hunt releasing that Affirm album, One More Moment. Uh, Oliver Wakeman also released that uh box set collaborations uh which had stuff he did with steve howe and, and gordon giltrap which is really right cool that was person. great oliver's piece yeah with steve howe and gordon but there's also i maybe it's not out yet and it's not out till february or it just came out please correct me on it i know you will the king crimson film documentary oh yeah it's it definitely got theater release um it might <laughs> not where i I'll, live <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll have to like look up if that's out on like yeah, home I thought video because like date like february or something for more like mass consumption or whatever yeah well we've we've got to watch that <laughs> oh yeah the promos for it were great and of course bill talked about it when he was on yeah i am very interested in that yeah just it's so cool being able to still talk about this stuff that's like history at this point, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. So we ready to move on to the next thing? Yes. Okay. So this is more to do with doing Yes Shift. So what were some of your favorite Yes Shift moments of 2022? Well, first, I just remembered another surprise. Um, the oh, new go ahead. Yeah, sorry. The new prog <laughs> band. Um, it's like a new super group, the Ding Dong Ditch Brigade with uh, Rick Wakeman, Peter Gabriel, Wolfgang Van Halen, and John Weathers, the drummer for Gentle Giant, probably the, the widest funky drummer. That I'm looking forward to that. That was a surprise. <laughs> you made that up, right? Yeah, I made it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, favorite Yes Shift moments. One of them is that uh, we're still doing it after it's been almost 18 months. 
Yeah. And, and we didn't like everything else Steve and I do. I think we pretty much, I think to a degree we're looking into the future, right? Like when you wrote your first novel, you knew you were going to write more drum talk TV. I had no idea it'd be as big as it was, but I knew it was going to be a thing. But with yes shift, we, we just kind of started doing it. And all of a sudden here we are and we've had some wonderful guests. We've, we, got the Roger Dean documentary that we filmed up in San Francisco that you're finishing. And, you know, so that, that's one of my favorite yes shift moments that we're still doing it. Um, all of the interviews, but I have to say that um, having Steve Howe and Steve Hackett on were to me personally and Bill Bruford, of course, were personally just out of this world for me because I've been listening yeah. to their music for 50 years or so, you know? So that was cool. That was fun. And it was really fun to do that together, especially not just do it together, but you be familiar with their music and know who they are, you know? Yeah. Um, that, that helped, but so many others, all, every interview is great, but those three really personally mean a lot to me because of my, sound chuck of my life connections to their music you know what i mean yeah with bill we were able to talk about his new box set with steve we were able to talk about lunar mist which uh he did with the late uh, virgil howe and you know i, I loved nexus that first album yeah uh and so to hear the announcement that there was more like it was just a nice little that was a thing. huge surprise yeah it, yeah it was great that they were able to, he was able to put all that together. I just listened it to it last night while I was working. Oh, actually. really? Yeah. It's, I don't get tired of that. It's like just up on a tab on my laptop constantly. And it's also part of a prog mix that YouTube put together for me based on what I listened to. And there's like six of his songs in a row and then a Genesis song, then five of his songs in a row, then Rick Wakeman, then six more songs of Virgil. It's like, whoa, this is great. Uh, yeah really and, neat stuff yeah and steve hackett was like like all these were surprises because you know bill was retired and then but this box set uh, all of a sudden he's like appearing on all these things yeah and now he's all over the place um with steve howe it, it was great that to see that he was really enjoying the conversation with steve yeah. hackett uh, like i didn't start this podcast thinking we'd ever have steve hackett <laughs> on here but we were able to talk with him about his genesis revisited live album and we had craig blundell as drummer on yeah and listening to his stuff like it was it was different but it, it won me over and it, it, he he was really <sighs> easy to talk to and such a great guy you're right and i gotta tell you something i've been meaning to tell you and show you darn it okay so i'll just do it here about five days ago i don't remember how this happened but I was in the email videos at drumtalktv.com, which is where when people fill out a form on the Drum Talk TV website to submit something, to, if they want to be featured, it goes to this email. I was checking it. And for some reason, it took me way back to 2015. I don't remember why, and that doesn't matter, but a name caught my eye. And that name was Craig Blundell. I said, wait a minute. So I put it on and here's this description saying, hi, my name's Craig. My son and I, he helped me film this video, having a lot of fun, drumming on different things. This is pre Steve Hackett success, Craig Blundell playing on like a coffee pot and a chair rail and all these different things. I got to repost that and show it to you or give it to you to repost or something it blew my mind and i forgot to tell you but yeah they they were both wonderful to have on and talk about that project and talk about how craig got the gig and i love those stories you know again to me they're success stories i read a lot of founders stories about how people create i just read the most amazing one i think um that was not a biography but broken down by one of my favorite marketing and sales gurus uh sabri subi and he broke down what makes Victoria's Secret such an insane $8 billion a year company? And the story is just amazing. And it's all about, like everything else, filling a void and solving a problem. And it was created because this gentleman went into a lingerie store to buy something for his wife or girlfriend. And 
it was lit by fluorescent lights and everything. The negligees looks like just day dresses. And then there's some older woman glaring at him like he's some pervert. And he realized, you know what the world needs? A lingerie store for men. And he created this, this amazing thing. But then it's broken down into how all the marketing worked and stuff like that. I love stories like that. So when we have someone like Craig Blundell that has newer success, newer on the scene for all intents and purposes, I love to always ask, how'd you get that gig? You know, just like we know Alan's story, how he got the yes gig. Bill, you know, I love that stuff. It, it's so, you can learn so much from it. You know, I don't plan on opening a negligee store, I don't think, but I learned, <laughs> I learned a lot from, from that story so much just like from bill's autobiography so i digress yeah we've had so many great conversations um jeff berlin is another one that comes to mind oh yeah, yeah duh yeah he uh put out jack's songs a tribute to jack, jack bruce. bruce and yeah the final track on that of fuimos we have been was such a heartfelt tribute and it's just really great stuff yeah thanks for mentioning that so jeff berlin I can't see everything about it, but Jeff's going to be part of a Drum Talk TV fill in the blank brackets that I can't say yet. And I, I'm like, not this far, but I'm maybe this far from being able to confirm it. Maybe two to three weeks, not confirm it, but say what it is. I'm super okay. excited about that because I first met Jeff on the ABWH tour when he filled in the last few shows for Tony Levin. But um, what are some other favorite Yes Shift moments with just the two of us, I have a few, but without guests, what, right. what would those be? Yeah, cause, well, just to finish off um, Train of Thought, we also had <laughs> Annie Haslam from Renaissance. Like Claire Hamill. Yeah, talking about Claire's new album, A Pocket Full of Love Songs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of just us, it's gotta be the San Francisco trip and just like the drive there and being at the exhibit and you know, podcasting from the hotel and then on, on the drive back. It was it was so very in the moment and we put out a ton of episodes. It felt like a week. week or two, but we were it was like a four day thing, if I remember right. Yeah, we, we had like one of the conversations we had was whether there should be a yes docudrama or not. And I was like so <laughs> proud of the graphic I made for that, which had the drama album cover and docu for the title. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was, and it was like very, um, there was also some pressure too, cause of like the stuff with the phone and like overheating and we had to like figure out like how to oh, do it yeah. correctly. It was just so, it, it, it was very, it was a moment in time, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was fun. Cause for those who don't know, I live in the mountains east of Phoenix, so I, my wife took me to Phoenix. I flew to where Steve was living at the time in Bakersfield, California. Then we had that drive that Steve's talking about. We drove San Francisco. Then the next day we went to the exhibit. And then we went to the exhibit again the next day. We filmed everything that he's editing. But like Steve said, we did some topics, pod vlogging from the hotel room. Um, and then on the way home, we shot, we did like four or six episodes on the drive from San Francisco back to Bakersfield. But we also had a moment, I remember it so vividly, at night we finished or it was in between episodes oh, in the yeah. hotel room. <laughs> we just purged, brain dumped, like literally 16 topics for episodes. And we haven't gotten to them all yet. So we've got a bunch of topics stacked up that we just need to develop a little bit. But we just came up with a couple ideas and then blah, blah, blah. Just, it was great. I loved that. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those moments where I was like, should we have been recording this? <laughs> I know, <laughs> especially for us. How do we not think of that? And then yeah. the other fun moment was uh, we did one or three three episodes when two weeks later I flew to Bakersfield and helped you move down to Downey, California. We did some oh, yeah. episodes on the road. We, we did one episode. Um, yeah, it was of our review of the Keith Emerson biography. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember us reading it in the room together separately and it was the longest period of time we'd ever been together where not one thing was said. We were just right. <laughs> rifling through this digital copy of that. That was great. Um, yeah. And I see uh, Brian Cahoon said, hey, guys. And Stephen Boyle said, Gavin Harrison does not get enough credit for his drumming, King Crimson, Porcupine Tree, et cetera. 
That's right. Uh, yeah, Gavin's um, pretty good. Yeah, you know, Simon Collins, Phil's older son, who we had on Jump Talk TV the other day, um, I asked him what are who are some of his inspirations right away. He said, Gavin Harrison just blows his mind. Porcupine Tree is like his favorite, second favorite band. Um, and then I, I said, so have you met him? He said, no. I said, you're kidding. So I did an email introduction between them. I haven't heard how that went yet. That was just right before Christmas. But um, Gavin's been on several times. In fact, I met Gavin and had him on the very first thing I ever did on Drum Talk TV, and that was two weeks after I started the company in January of 2013, I saw him walk by at the 2013 NAMM show, and I called his name. He turned around. I held out my card. I have one right here, in fact. I went like this. I said, uh, I said, hi, Gavin, it's Dan Shinner with Trump Talk TV. Would you mind doing an interview? And he, you know, looked at the, took the card, looks legit. He said, yeah, meet me at the Sonar booth in an hour. It was great. And he had this new snare and he was just, so I've known him since then. And it was great. And he was the first interview a couple of years ago. And he's been on twice since then. Just a great guy. And a, as noted, a phenomenal drummer. Absolutely. Very musical. Yeah. And in terms of the podcast, it's so gratifying whenever people like comment, like for, on our Billy Sherwood interview and later the Jay Shellen interview, when people comment saying this was very informative, it shed more light on their history with the band and before and whatnot. And I just love this. that people are watching other than your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I actually have like a comment I saw on one of our YouTube posts oh. recently so uh let me just open it up real quick this was from sanders thornburg um and this was a comment on our arc of life and don't look down episode so sanders said as to the question of who would possibly replace downs upon his retirement from yes maybe many years down the line i would highly agree with stephen that oliver wakeman would be the best and most obvious choice Oliver is such a great keyboardist and a really graceful chap who I believe is the kind of guy who holds no grudges. I prefer Arc of Life's Don't Look Down for several reasons. Production-wise, I think it's better as well as it being a more full band effort, although not near as much as it could be and hopefully will be on the third Arc of Life album. And of course, hmm. hearing more keyboards from Kersner is a big step up, as you have already noted. Um, and then uh, he says, thank you so much for contributions to the Yes community with your Yes Shift podcast, as I enjoyed them all. Your father's son approach is truly inspiring. And I think any Yes fan would love to have the kind of bond that you two exemplify. Wow. Thank you. I'm getting choked up. I really appreciate that. That's nice. Yeah, just, Thanks, Sanders. Yeah, just stuff like that. You know, it's, I mean, we already have fun doing the podcast together, but hearing that other people enjoy our conversations. It makes it even more gratifying. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. And we also like always want people to chime in. So, so far I'm looking at some cheat sheet. We've covered which bits of news this year surprised you the most mm -hmm. folks. Uh, what shows did you see in person or streamed online stand out or might've been your favorite favorite new releases by the yes first, whether current members, past members, peripheral uh, uh, cohorts, uh, favorite yes shift moments. Stephen just read the comment of one. Thanks again, Sanders Thornburg. Um, and now with that, I think we'll move into your recap of the John Anderson Zoom q and Sadly, I couldn't make that. Yeah, well, th there will be more at some point. But yeah, let me just open up my notes real quick. Um, Okay, so yeah, I've got them open, and this was moderated by uh, someone named Christian Gallucci. Uh, John was a little bit late because of like some technical difficulties, but uh, he was able to get on. But one of the things he said while that was happening was he was on the phone with Christian, and he's like, "Hi, everybody, I'm in computer hell right now." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, and he said, happy everything. Uh, I think that was once he was on. Uh, he reiterated that the Paul Green Rock Academy will be playing in Europe uh, in the summer next year. So he mentioned a couple locations like Prague and Madrid. 
And in spring, he's doing the band geeks, uh, playing Yes music. And he said, who knows what's going to happen later in the year. Um, he does mention something possibly later in the year, which I'll get to as I scroll through these. Um, someone asked him what, what the, about the process for developing a little idea into a song. And John basically said, like, you are surrounded by music. Uh, know that what's coming now is part of your experiences now. And he said that all he does is like play something and sing something and put it away and then come back to it and just keep doing little bits and sometimes they come together. Hmm. Um, and someone else asks, what's the inspiration for Hurry Home? Uh, so that's a song from his 1988 solo album in the City of Angels. He said the idea is pretty Irish because uh, his mother is Irish and uh, also there's some British and Scottish ancestry. As he said, hurry home to your spiritual self. Everyone has the same spiritual energy. You just know you want to sit in quiet and think of positive things for half an hour. And he recalled how he performed it in Edinburgh uh, in Scotland some years ago. Oh. And there were 400 people in this little theater club. Oh. And, he sang, and he sang it as the last song in the set. And the people all started stomping their feet in the ground like in time with the song. That's cool. Yeah, and John also mentioned he listens to a lot of symphonic music. And, oh, really? Uh, uh, he's probably heard, someone asked him um, about Rush, and he said he's probably heard Rush on the radio, and Geddy Lee was so together at the Hall of Fame, you know, when he performed with Yes. Um, yeah. And someone asked him, have you considered virtual reality for showcasing Zamran? And that's the Elias sequel. Yeah. And he's, he was like, I can virtually get my head together now. <laughs> um, he, and he continued, if someone came and said they want to do that, I'd say, please. Um, but he wouldn't know where to start. And he mentioned the videos he's been doing with Mickey Byrne over on YouTube on the Zamran experience. Hmm. And uh, also, he's been working with a friend from Poland, and he hasn't found someone to put a VR into the world yet, but it seems like something he's interested in. That's neat. Yeah, and there was uh, someone named April who said that she shares a birthday with John, uh, and she asked, do you still have your gold Scorpio? Um, oh, I think it's like a necklace thing. Um, and he says, probably not. He used to wear it on a gold band. I saw a pic of it and thought it was silly. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, um, and he said he went through a period uh, two years ago listening to a guy in London, uh, Jacob Callier. Um, I think that's how it was pronounced. Um, and that inspired him to work on Opus, which he's been like trickling out on YouTube and whatnot. And um April is also says she's going to see John in April. So that, oh. that was kind of funny. Uh, John said they'll be doing uh, epics with the band geeks. He wants to do Close to the Edge, Awaken, Yours is No Disgrace, and eight other songs. Um, wow. Yeah, and this was when I asked him my question, which was something we were wondering about, which was like, is there more Yes songs footage? And I think he was probably confused by like, the way I asked the question, but uh, in a in a roundabout way, huh, roundabout, um, <laughs> it it basically seems like uh, he doesn't know like what the answer is to that whole situation. That's interesting um, to me. Yeah, you know? but um, we got into like a a little uh, tangent about like he, he likes looking at some of the old stuff on YouTube. He he usually looks for like stuff like George Carlin on YouTube, but then comes across some yes shows, and he look. <laughs> He loves thinking back to Symphonic Live, play, playing with the orchestra in that video. Um, I, I also wrote that he said he likes playing tennis with a tennis ball. Um, and uh, I had the Invention of Knowledge album cover as my background during this. And he, he's, he was like, it's coming. He, re he reiterated that he and uh, Rona Stolt are still working on the second album but you know it's just record companies and stuff like that uh, yeah um but yeah that was a really nice little convo like that's i'm always great. glad to be able to yeah talk with him that's cool yeah um he said um okay i mentioned this before he sang the first few words of three ships 
Uh, someone asked if he'd ever collaborate with Kataro again. And, you know, that was 30 years ago, that album. That I love that dream. album. Yeah. Yeah. He, he says that the idea was to make a double or duo album together, but it just didn't work. But uh, he told the person who asked, uh, if it happens, I'll let you know. Um, okay. So later in 2023, he's hoping to go to the West Coast in November or in December, uh, maybe play in Vegas Christmas Eve. So, hmm. hey, maybe um that'll be an opportunity to see him again yeah that's awesome uh, yeah and someone asked do you ever get lyrics and music and dreams and he said i don't think so the way i listen to lyrics is just sing i learned this from vangelis i just sing the melody um let's see he recalled a gig where he was going through like some gig memories i think this might have been with the warriors if i'm not mistaken now davy foster's hand got slammed by the door and it took about half an hour for him to move his fingers again oh wow and john said he gave him a big hug <laughs> um uh he also said i don't remember what this was in response to but john said meditate under stars watch the sunset um oh i think that this is stuff he likes to do um he says it's a happy sort of nothingness wonderfulness one might say um and he also mentioned how in 1979, um, you know, in Paris, there was uh, Marc Chagall working on music about a fairy kingdom. He says he'll be performing his Chagall musical uh, next year in a theater in San Francisco. Mm. Um, so if that happens, maybe that'll be another excuse to yeah. go to San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, someone asked about his brother, Tony, uh, and he says Tony is doing great, and they get on the phone and laugh for an hour. And his older brother, Stuart, uh, he says, aging gracefully um someone, wow, how, how old is tony and stewart do you know uh i know that i'm i don't know their exact ages but definitely both older brothers i'm pretty sure because yeah, john's um, 78 yeah um and someone else uh mentioned a cartoon if that was found in the paper uh, some newspaper where someone asked do you know who sang owner of only heart and if so do you have any of their records and the answer was yes and yes. And then the next day, that person woke up to Owner of the Lonely Heart on the radio. <laughs> and, and John said, yeah, that happens to me sometimes too. Um, and so, yeah, there will be another of these Zoom things in January. Um, I don't know if it'll be open to everyone again or if it'll be like certain people. But yeah, that was another nice little Q&A that I really enjoyed. That's great. Anybody chime in on their favorites of 2022? from watching us or watching archives or favorite releases, surprises, anything like that? Yeah, I see Dave Watkinson chimed in again saying, John Anderson in Europe, yeah, it's been so long. <laughs> How long has it been, Dave? Like it's, it's since probably, yes, Symphonic? No, like John Anderson in Europe. Um, yeah. That's, it's, pro it's probably been since, yeah, actually, I don't know because – I. I can't remember when his last acoustic tour that he did in Europe was. So mm. it's definitely been a while. Um, ARW, I think, toured in Europe. So that might have been like five years ago or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, then we're on to, there was another bit of news that came out like within the past day or so, actually. And I found this out through Henry Potts's excellent Yes News site, Bande Gazoo. Uh, so this came about from uh, a Facebook group, apparently, where Trevor Rabin commented. But uh, he's been working on a solo album called Rio, uh, apparently named after a grandchild. And hmm. if this is the same project that he mentioned in a Prague interview a couple years ago, then it might be sung songs, like kind of like more Can't Look Away than Jacaranda, which was just instrumental. Um, so that'll probably be out sometime in the new year, I would imagine. But yeah, what do you think of that bit of news there? That's awesome, because uh, recently something, I saw him, a picture of him or something, posted in one of the yes groups and i i thought i wonder if he's gonna ever do anything other than music soundtracks now you know right because he's been he did um 
the show that's currently airing that I'm actually watching, uh, National Treasure, Edge of History. You know, oh. he's, come, he's come back to that franchise. Um, it's been tough for me to really pay attention to the music of the show, so I'll have to, like, try listening to it in isolation or maybe do a rewatch or something. Yeah. But, when did that yeah. come out? Uh, it started airing, like, two weeks ago. It's on its oh. fourth or fifth episode now. It's on Disney+. Plus. Oh, it's a series? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I- I'm really excited about this solo album because I've been yeah, wanting I'm- him to put it out for years. He's been working on this and I think another instrumental one, but it's been a while oh, since wow. we've heard about them. Yeah, I'm curious if it'll be all him or if someone else is guesting or what the story is behind that. Yeah, I think in that Prague interview a couple years ago, he might have mentioned that he wants to try get Rick to guest on something on there. That's awesome. Who wouldn't? Right. <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess with that, um, and like I said, there will be a couple uh, other thing. Do you want me to do like the surprise things first or do you want to say what we're looking forward to in the coming year first? Let's do the latter first. Okay, so coming year. Yeah. Um, so we've got that, and we've got Rick Wakeman's uh, next solo album, A Gallery of Imagination, coming out. And Oliver Wakeman's also been posting about his solo album, Anamkara, and the progress of that. And there are like some other s- releases we're expecting this coming year. So between those and between like potential new Yes album and third Arc of Life album, and the delayed Downs Braid Association album, and maybe some other things I'm not I'm blanking on right now. Um, what are you most looking forward to in 2023? Like in terms of releases or touring? Like you could give a couple answers. Or as just far anything. as what I know about, I really want to see Carl Palmer with the playing along with Greg Lake and Keith Emerson. I really want to see that show. So that that's coming around. Yeah, um, uh, well, well, I think they performed that in November, if I'm not mistaken. Did, did um, that blow by already? They're done? Yeah, it might have. Um, oh, I didn't realize. Uh, I thought they were just going <laughs> to take for the break for the holidays. Okay, wow. Okay, so then... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, like, looking some stuff up to see. Yeah, um, there's a lot of stuff there. Trevor Rabin's album I'm very interested in. Rick, Rick's project... Um, and Oliver's solo album, I'm sure, is going to be great. Those those are probably the big ones that I'm looking forward to, of things I know of. Okay. How about yeah, you? The, yeah, the Carl Palmer shows were, like, mainly East Coast, so, yeah. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah, that's yeah. why I wasn't upset about missing it, because I didn't. Right. <laughs> yeah. I would have been mad if they were out here and, like, I forgot to ring up about that or something. Right. So uh, for me, um, in terms of next year, you know, I am going to try to see Yes's Relayer tour. And um, like basically my resolution is to try and be more aware of live shows happening near me. So uh, stuff like, you know, other bands, you know, I know Kansas is touring. and Oh, yeah, um, I want to see that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm now that things are a bit lighter in terms like things are safer i want to see if i can see more shows in this coming year so that's gonna be my resolution to just be more aware of what's happening they'll be more accessible to you now too yeah being closer to la um but in terms of releases like the trevor rapin thing is really exciting but if I'm really honest with myself, it, it's always new yes music. Like I always get excited about like how different yeah. is it gonna sound or will some of it harken back to some of the stuff we're familiar with. It's like, um, and, and it's like it's very unpredictable. It's always exciting to hear yes music. Like even if it doesn't measure up to some of the stuff I prefer, I'm still curious about what they'll do with it, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm also looking forward to a bunch of the guests that have not been on that we've talked about getting. So we'll we'll get to work on that. I'm excited yeah. about our first documentary coming out, the Roger D. 
Dean and Freya Dean yeah, exhibit. I'm, I'm hoping to get it out by this weekend. It's just been oh, really well, well. Yeah, I'm hoping. To... Oh darn! You froze for a moment there. Hold on. Wave your arms around for a minute. Oh no, the signal went wonky. Um, but while while Steve's hopefully connecting here. Um, I'm looking forward to that. But remember, if you're going to put it out on the weekend, I need to see it first. So we need to coordinate all that mess. Uh, but I'm very excited for that. We, we put a lot of work into it, and you put even a lot more into it after you know we came back. So I appreciate that. You're back. You're back. Okay. All right. I'm back. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the stream, and yeah, it looks like I'm back. Uh, so you can hear me well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess that's all the stuff we're looking forward to off the top of our heads. Uh, so do you want me to move into like the surprise yes. real quick? Yeah. Okay. So these are a couple things we brought up on actually the first episode and I've been like trying to like bring Let it back in, here. in some form, but we just keep getting like sidetracked by all these other things. How long um, ago was this? So 17 months? Yeah, like a year and a half ago, maybe in May when we first recorded, like the first episode or whatever. Yeah. Um, so these are a couple games that you came up with. One of them is Antithesis, yes, where uh, we each mentioned like three different yes songs and the other like says a song that's like a yes song that's like the opposite. Right. As far as like not opposite in name, folks, but opposite in... Like like mood for a day, close to the edge, you know, just two completely yeah. different types of, um, what would you say? Moods. Compositions. Moods for a day. Yeah. And the other is Take It or Leave It, where we choose an album and we each say what our favorite and least favorite song from that album yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. All right. Wow, so, we talked about this way back then. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So which one do you want to do first? Let's do Antithesis. Yes. Okay, um, so I'll say three to you, and then you can do three to me. Okay. Madrigal. Sound Chaser. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Um, Heart of the Sunrise. Circus of Heaven. <laughs> yeah, going from like really sped up to kind of slower, yeah. Um, Machine Messiah. Oof. <laughs> Masquerade. Okay, yeah, that works. Okay, so Wondrous Stories. Um, that's funny. The first thing that came to mind was Awaken. because Me too. <laughs> me too. How funny. And they're both yeah. very quintessentially sounding yes songs, you know. Yeah. Um, new State of Mind. Oh, that's a good one. Um holy lamb oh yeah that's <laughs> one you keep in your pocket for just about anything you know but, uh miracle of life oh that is such a good one uh yeah okay so even though they're both kind of about nature and stuff i think musically like they're kind of opposites in a way. Like the first thing my head went to was it will be a good day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very opposite. Yeah. That was cool. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to choose the album for take it or leave it? Yes. Um, yeah. I was just thinking, you know, I, I, maybe the most pff, obvious one, <laughs> The most polarizing, possibly, I'll say, open your eyes. Okay. And I got to think of all the songs on there for a moment. <laughs> no, I'm going to pull it up real quick. Well, I mean, if you I want, know... I, I, I could list them all to you off the top of my head, like right now. Well, you you answer first. Your, what's okay. your take it? What's your leave it? Yeah, my take it is definitely... Like it, it was kind of between open your eyes and universal garden, but I think I'm leaning more toward universal garden because of like the themes of it. And, like, I think we even talked about that aspect of it. Yes. Um, and my least favorite is man in the moon. Cause it just feels 
really? somewhat repetitive. Like for a yes song, it's kind of just eh, but like as a conspiracy song, it kind of works better. Okay, so mine's hard because there are a lot of songs on here I yeah. really like. I'm looking at the list just to refresh my. Yeah, it's just a game about it. I'm going to say uh, Fortune Seller is one of my favorite favorites on there for the Take It. And for the Leave It, I'm going to say people are going to hate on me for this. Possibly <laughs> possibly from the balcony. Okay. Yeah, I actually like, really love that song, but that's fair. Yeah. I like it, but if I had to pick one without so you want to do one you want to pick an album do the same thing okay uh but real quick i see a comment from dave Watkinson. favorites to come relay or live topographic universe anniversary john's tour dba show new yes album rick shows in london and possibly historic releases by us and what Ooh, he wants what does that mean um yeah i don't know if it's something he's hinting at or something that he wants like an archival release but i guess we'll see and he says he wants Trevor Rapin to tour. Oh, that would be so fun. Yeah. And, oh, I wonder what his BAM would be. And he would also like Patrick Moraz to join in Relayer Tour a bit. Oh, <sighs> that, that would be perfect. Yeah, on uh, base. Yeah, Just John kidding. in the UK and some yes surprises. Okay. Nice. Um, yeah, so album, I think I'll go with, and this is same decade, but whatever. Let's go with talk. So... What's your favorite and least favorite from Talk? <laughs> um, people are going to think I'm a fucking idiot having to look this stuff up. <laughs> <sighs> just caught me off guard. Okay. Songs. Yeah, uh, I'm I mean, going to... Huh? What? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, my favorite is... Um, or... Yeah, still thinking about it. Yeah, still thinking, folks. Because I love this song, too. Okay, Walls is my leave it. <laughs> uh, I, and other than that, I got to go with Endless Dream, the whole thing, if I don't have to break it down. You know, you okay. got a 1 minute 54, 11, 56, and a 1 minute and change. So I'll take the whole Endless Dream. Yeah, That's like the only yeah. epic, really, if you can call it that with Trevor right yeah it definitely is yeah um yeah endless dream is my favorite off that album it's even and people might be surprised but it's probably a top 10 yes song for me really wow that's cool yeah and my least favorite um yeah that's a bit tougher i'm just going through the album in my head right now i'm gonna say it it's probably where will you be like i do like the spiritualness of it but in terms like in terms of pacing like i just prefer the other songs on the album so gotcha. like it's a nice song but where will you be is probably my leave it for that i like leave it <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah yeah that was fun and yeah again there's like still stuff to look forward to um i know kevin morine uh said that January 31st is the release date for his Tormato book, which oh, you great. can pre-order at tormatobook.com. That'll be a fun thing to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. There's and some stories there. And you know what? I'm I'm hoping, oops, I'm hoping there'll be some stories that clear some stuff up, you know, because we've heard different takes. I mean, we still might just like in other books. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. But there might yeah, be uh, just a list of conflicting accounts. Yeah. So maybe what I mean is some gaps will be filled in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Cool. Um, and when, then we've got the rest of all those topics that we purged that will develop in episodes and ideas from our fans. You could write us at yes, shift podcast at gmail.com. You could follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash yes, shift. You can follow us on YouTube at youtube.com slash at yes shift and on anchor. If you're an audio only person, don't want to look at all this, <laughs> um, then you could just listen to us at anchor.fm slash yes shift, where we're distributed on about eight of the major 
podcast platforms. We'd love to hear from you. Most importantly, Stephen and I both wish everybody well for the holidays and an epic new year. Huge year for me personally. Huge year. Immense. Huge. It's going to be a huge year, Steve. Yeah. And again, thank you to all you listeners and contributors and all the people who've been on our show. It'd be so many to list, but just know we're very grateful to have you engaging with this passion project that we do. Yeah. And we'll probably keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine first episode of the new year we announced, okay, we're canceling we're done. the show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, we're still going to be going. Yeah, don't worry. We're switching to EOP shift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there was only one shift, really, but not right. a good example. Jethro Tull shift there. There's another institution for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Thanks, everybody, so much. And Steve, thank you for always doing such a great job putting these together and uh, it, this is always fun. You know, we had fun doing this before we did it as a show. Yeah. That's why I suggested we do this as a show so we can kind of hang out online with other Yes fans, whether live or on the archive, so they could enjoy it. We could enjoy their comments, hopefully, most of them. Yeah, like this is a show I wish we'd been doing for years, but I'm glad that it's happening. And we've done yeah. like so much with it, more than I imagined we'd have done by this point a year and a half. We, we did so more episodes this year on this than on Trump Talk TV, I think. <laughs> I mean, if you even if, if you count all the interviews and then there's four original series that are once a month, we may have done a lot more episodes on this. Okay. Yeah. yeah but there so... will be a lot of new stuff happening in 2023 on Trump Talk TV if you're following us there, folks. Did you check comments there? Uh, we have three yeah, new series coming out. We have three new... May I promote just a little bit, Steve? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, we have three new series coming out, original series. Right now, we already have a tribute to the tributes, which is Jason, Johnny, and myself paying tribute to awesome tribute bands. And then we've got Under the Influence, which is not what it sounds like, even though it might sound <laughs> like it sometimes. That's myself with Lou Calderola, and we we exemplify and play two things each that have heavily influenced us musically are on the drums. And then there's drumming injury talk with Dr. Nadia Azar, professor of kinesiology in Windsor, Canada, uh, the University of Windsor. So we have those three. And number four, Dan's almost daily vlog, which I'm going to get back into doing more regularly. In fact, Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific, right? Yeah, 11 a.m. Pacific, I'm going to do the last show of the year, recap and announce a couple other things. And we have three new series coming out. My wife thought of two, actually. One of them I might even have her host or co-host with her. And then uh, I won't say what those are yet. And we're releasing a subscription model off of social media that'll be gamified It'll be experiences you can go through online and in person. A ton of content. We're releasing that. You can sign up for the Trump Talk TV newsletter um, to find out more about that as the news comes out. If you go to the Drum Talk TV Facebook page, which is simply Drum Talk TV, click sign up. Sign up for that. You'll learn about that. And um, should I say this? It's, it's our 10th year in January. So this year we're doing an in-person celebration and stuff like that. And I have a huge birthday with a zero at the end of it. I'm going to be 40. <laughs> right. Not, not 40. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's my promo and, and why I'm super excited about this year. Yeah, for sure. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. And I forgot to do this with some outro music, perhaps. Okay. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next year.